Let's now go to research methods and methodology. Actually, we have to, to differentiate three terms, research method, research methodology, and research techniques. Methodology has broad and narrow meanings. The broader meaning is the analysis of the principles of methods, rules, and postulates employed by a discipline. That's a broader definition of methodology. Or it could be also a systematic theoretical analysis of the methods applied to a field of study. The reason why th these are broad definitions is because they are only applicable to discipline and field of study, not to any specific undertaking. So these are the two, these are the broader definitions of methodology. However, in research, the term is adopted and is defined as the general research strategy that, that outlines the way in which research is to be undertaken and among other things, identifies the methods and techniques to be used in it. So that's the narrow definition of methodology adopted in research. Let's have more definition from Ellen. To Ellen, a methodology is an articulated, theoretically informed approach to the production of data. To Krati, it is a strategy, a plan of action, process, or design that informs one's choice of research methods. And thus, to Greeks, methodology is concerned with the discussion of how a particular piece of research should be undertaken. So I think it's quite obvious now why these are the narrow definitions of research applicable only to quote unquote research and not to any field or discipline. Research methodology it guides the researcher in deciding what type of data is required for a study and which data collection tools will be most appropriate for the purpose of specific study. It is the methodological question that leads the researcher to ask how the world should be studied. Methodology is the science of finding out. It is the overall mindset and the general plan. It is a general plan of how a particular study is to be executed, which includes all the methods to be used and techniques that are necessary for the study. Its aim is to give the work plan for research. But what is method and technique? Methods and techniques are not the same thing, remember that, although sometimes one is used as a close synonym for the other, but it's important to be precise and know the difference of these three. Methods refer to the behavior and instruments used in selecting and constructing research technique, while Techniques refer to the behavior and instruments we use in performing research operations, such as making observations, recording data, and any techniques that are necessary for processing data. It seems hard to grasp what is the difference between the two, but let me show you lots of examples in the following slide. Here, we have three columns, the type, the methods, and the techniques. As you can see, in library research, we have two methods. We can analyze the historical records. We can also analyze other documents. And in historical records, there are many techniques. We can record notes, content analysis, tape, film, listening, and, and analysis. While in analysis of documents, we have statistical compilations, manipulations, reference, and so on. So the actual difference between the two is that techniques are more specific way of doing something. Another example is surface hardening. Are you familiar with surface hardening? There are many methods of hardening the surface of an object, especially metal. There is carburizing, there is nitriding, cyaniding, and flame hardening. These are the different methods. But in carburizing alone, you have many ways to carburize the surface of a metal. 
there is pipa carburizing. There's also gas carburizing, liquid carburizing, and so on. Another example would be cutting operation of branch of, of wood or trees. We may have different methods of cutting the branch. We can use a rotary blade or a reciprocating blade. Under rotary blade, we have circular saw or angle grinder. So it is the methods that generate techniques. Technique is a more specific way of achieving something. However, the distinction is often forgotten, and both the methods or techniques refer to the methods. But it's important to know the difference. Research methods are the various procedures, schemes, and algorithms that are used in research. All the methods used by a researcher during a research study are termed as research methods. They are essentially planned, systematic, and scientific. They include theoretical procedures, experiment experimental studies, numerical schemes, statistical approaches, etc. Research methods help us collect samples, data, and find a solution to a problem. There are basically four categories of methods. In the first group, we include those methods which are concerned with the collection of data. These methods include the collection of the primary and the secondary data. Primary and secondary data. In the second group, it refers to the set of processes that are involved in a given experiment. So, for example, you have an experiment of determining the wettability of treated and untreated bamboo. So we have here treated bamboo. The surface is treated. And we have untreated surface bamboo. So your chosen method for surface treatment of bamboo is hydrogen peroxide. But you can also choose other method. For instance, there is also brine brine solution and also we have a simple sanding so those are the methods for surface treatment of the bamboo and your method for determining the wettability of the surface of treated and untreated bamboo is through a contact angle method so your wettability wettability is contact angle method but of course there are also other methods for determining the wettability and wettability refers to this angle then we have also this droplet so this is treated bamboo and this is untreated bamboo so that's an example of a given experiment you have many methods to choose from the third group would be those statistical techniques which are used for establishing relationship between data and the unknowns. Examples would be ANOVA, uh, regression, regression analysis. So these methods are used for, for finding re valid relationship between known and unknown variables. And the last, the fourth group, it consists of those methods which are used to evaluate the accuracy of the results. I think it refers to the validity, validity and reliability of the methods that are used. How valid and reliable is the instrument and how accurate it is in its measurement. Usually the last two groups are generally taken as the analytical tools of research. And when you look for what type of myth methods to use, questions such as which is a suitable method, what is the order of accuracy, and what is the efficient method should be taken into consideration. Going back to methodology, research methodology is a way to systematically solve the research problem. It may be understood scientifically. It should be scientific. In research methodology, we study the various steps that are generally adopted by researchers, experts, or organizations for standards in studying a given research problem, along with the logic behind them. We have different organization for standards. We have ASME, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. We also have ASTM, American Society for Testing and Materials. Of course, we have ISO, International Organization for Standards. We also have PAP, Psychological Association of the Philippines. And we also have APA, American Psychological Association. And the last 
is ISE, International Society of Electrochemistry. These are organizations responsible for following the standard procedures for specific method or techniques, and they should be applied in your methodology. There are literatures for various methods and techniques that are used in a given field of study that are standardized by international organizations. The researcher, you, must be aware of these because they are recognized worldwide and they have gone a peer review process in terms of their reliability and validity. So it's important to remember that. Researchers not only need to know how to develop certain tests or, or indices or indicators or, or any sort, how to calculate the mean, the mode, the median, or the standard deviation or the chi-square, how to apply particular research techniques, but they also need to know which of these methods or techniques are relevant and which are not, and what would they mean and indicate and why. In other words, you have to justify. There must be a justification of why you choose that method. For example, in determining the moisture content of a product or object, there are various methods that are available. There are, for example, Carl Fisher, Carl Fisher method. We also have loss on drying method. We have electrical method. We also have microwave, etc. So you need to be able to defend why you use this and not the others. You have to understand why you chose this person and not the others. You know what I'm saying. You should know the reason. Researchers also need to understand the assumptions that underlie various techniques and they need to know the criteria by which they can decide that some techniques and procedures will be applicable to certain problems and others will not. In other words, each methods and techniques have strengths and weaknesses. They have scope and limitations. You have to remember that not all techniques and methods are one size fits all. Researchers should be aware of this where they might affect the integrity of the data and would therefore skew the result of the research. And it's all pointless and a waste of time. What this all means is that it is necessary for the researcher to design his or her methodology for a given problem because not all problems are the same. Your methodology should be done or designed for a specific problem. Every methodology is unique because every problem is not the same. It is necessary for the researcher to know not only the research methods and techniques, but also his or her methodology. For example, an architect who designs a building. An architect has to consciously evaluate the basis of his decision. He has to evaluate why and what, and on what basis he selects a particular size, the number and location of doors, windows, and ventilators, why he uses particular materials and not others. That is also similar in research. The scientist or the researcher has to expose the research decisions to evaluation before they are implemented. This is basically the reason why we do proposal defense, because our decisions or the, res the research decision has to be specified very clearly and precisely what decisions the researchers select and why they select them so that they can be evaluated by others. In other words, it should be peer reviewed. Your methodology has to be scrutinized by supposed to be pool of experts. It has to be checked if you have a logical and achievable path in solving your research problem. So you see that we can say that research methodology has many dimensions and research methods do constitute a part of the research methodology. The scope of research methodology is wider than that of research methods. Therefore, when we talk of research methodology, we not only talk of the research methods, but also consider the logic behind the methods in the context of our research study. And we explain why we are using a particular method or technique and why we're not using others so that research results are capable of being evaluated either by the researcher himself or by others. Questions such as why a research study has been undertaken, 
how the research problem has been defined, in what way, and why the hypothesis has been formulated, what data have been collected, and what particular method has been adopted, why particular technique of analyzing data has been used, and other host of similar questions are usually answered when we talk of research methodology. These are just a few of the questions that need to be asked and answered when planning your methodology.